Hello and welcome to the 19th Annual Historic Preservation Awards presented by the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs. I'm Tim Boddington, President of the Board of Directors, and we're so pleased you have joined us. 2020 has been a year like no other, yet our organization has continued to work in creative ways to help protect and preserve the historic places that matter. We've learned how to connect virtually and safely, and we thank you for your continued support of our work. We are on the eve of our city's sesquicentennial next year, and we're looking forward to the many stories of how things, of how our history has shaped who we are. Thanks to the filming skills of our good friends Peter Blaney and Dave Rickert, we're presenting our annual honor awards celebrating outstanding rehabilitation, restoration, civic preservation, stewardship, lifetime achievement, and a new category this year called Preservation in Progress. We have served our community as a nonprofit advocacy and education organization for historic preservation for 21 years. And speaking for our board uh, and members, I know we are all looking forward to the time when we can gather again in person for our winter lectures, summer tours, spring field trip, workshops, dinner galas, and our annual membership meeting. Please visit us at hbasprings.org to learn more, become a member, and support our advocacy and educational efforts in historic preservation. Before I introduce our board member, Ann Brock, I'd like to thank the graphic design team of Roth Graphics for their exceptional work to create these handsome honor awards, which we will be presenting in person to each recipient in the near future. Ann Brock joined our board this year and is presenting our first two awards. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I'm Ann Brock, and I'm here to kick off the award presentation, giving the Compatible Landscape Award to the Friends of Monument Valley Park for, for their stonework project. I'm standing here by the Columbia Street entrance in Monument Valley Park. General William Palmer gave Monument Valley Park to the people of Colorado Springs in 1907. General Palmer envisioned a two-mile linear park with many entrances to the park so that people could get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. The Columbia Street entrance was built during the WPA, or Works Progress Administration, in the 1930s. It was built after the 1935 flood, which damaged many portions of the park. The financial crisis of 2008 put a big burden on the finances of the city and the Parks Department found they had little funding for maintenance of the parks. The Friends of Monument Valley Park saw the need and the stonework project began in 2011. Through donations from the Independent Give campaign and state historical fund grants, the Friends were able to start and finish a conditions assessment and the work began. The Columbia Street entrance here was in danger of collapse. It was leaning at a 12 degree angle, had missing cracks, missing stones, and that had been all replaced. The Calibra entrance overlook on the main path was also renovated as well as the most unique feature of the park, the geologic column. General Palmer hired engineer Edmund Bandiste in 1907 to build the geologic column in order to demonstrate the geologic history of the Pikes Peak region. Now, shifting from earth to sky, I'd like to award the Civil Civic Award to the United States Air Force for the Air Force Academy Planetarium and STEM Center. The planetarium was built in 1959 and it is one of the oldest buildings on the Air Force Academy grounds. It served as educational programs for Air Force cadets and the general public in, in space, flight, navigation, and astronomy. But by 2004, it was outdated technology, so it had to close. 
this five million dollar renovation took place and it was reopened in 2019 to the public and for the cadets. You can go see shows in its beautiful IMAX type theater on not only space and astronomy, but also nature. Because of COVID-19, it is closed right now, but go to the website for the planetarium to find resources and educational activities you can do at home. My name is Pat Doyle. I live in the Old North in neighborhood. I'm also on the Historic Preservation Alliance board. And it is my pleasure today to present the Historic Preservation Alliance Lifetime Achievement Award to a friend and fellow Old North End neighborhood volunteer, Robert D. Levy. Robert Bob Levy was born in St. Louis and was reared in Baltimore, Maryland. He received an AB from Williams College and a PhD from Johns Hopkins University. He became involved in politics when he was a university student. Bob's major research inter interests include Congress, civil rights, presidential elections, and Colorado politics, especially as local politics. He is the author of numerous books on government and the history of Colorado College. You can prob probably read the many informative articles on politics he and his Colorado College colleague, Tom Cronin, have written for the Colorado Springs Gazette. Bob and his wife Constance moved to the Old North End neighborhood known as Onan in 1976. Thus began Bob's participation in the Old North End Neighborhood Association where his major efforts were to preserve the beauty of the neighborhood and call attention to the neighborhood's beautiful architecture and history. While president, while president of the Old North End Neighborhood Association from 1976 to 1980, he wrote the neighborhood's first master plan, instituted Onan's first tree planting program, provided the leadership as the association worked through the process of putting four major north-south streets and their side streets on the National Register. Now expanded and updated, this area is known as the Old North End National Register Historic District. As a member of the Old North End Overlay Zoning Committee, he worked with others on a year-long public process to bring the North End National Register Historic District under the Overlay Zone Ordinance. This was in October of 2000. As a member of the Old North End's Historic Preservation Committee, formerly the Overlay Zoning Committee, Bob helped the committee members work from this, with the city to install historic looking streetlights on North Tejon Street. Replace the green and white street name signs with black and white street signs and neighborhood identifiers across the neighborhood. He also helped design and construct six neighborhood entryways. All of these amenities were suggested in the neighborhood master plan. In 2010, Bob co-authored a book with Jennifer Windler Lovell entitled Exploring the Old North End Neighborhood of Colorado Springs. It talks about the architecture and history of this community, this neighborhood, and includes six neighborhood walking tours. And since that time, he has written two additional books that celebrate the neighborhood's architecture and its history. Bob Levy's action-oriented expertise and vision have not only meant so much to one neighborhood, but to all those who value the history and the importance of historic preservation in Colorado Springs. Bob, in celebration of your countless contributions, the Historic Preservation Alliance and the Old North End Neighborhood Board present you with two plaques to place on the out side of your home. The oval plaque shows the date of your house. The larger plaque tells one of its heartwarming stories. Bob, congratulations. Hi again, I'm Pat Doyle. 
And this time, I would like to focus on the Old North End neighborhood, a little bit, very minimally, about its history. And then I would like to focus on the uh, history of the neighborhood organization. General Palmer hired Robert A. Cameron as the first Colorado Springs city planner. In a letter to Mr. Cameron in 1871, Palmer wrote, my theory for this place is that it should be made the most attractive place for homes in the West. Development in the Old North End began in earnest in the 1890s with the discovery of gold in Cripple Creek and the Victor Mines. The, this mining boom created millionaires, but also a moneyed cl middle class, such as lawyers, stockbrokers, bankers, office managers, and owners of various businesses that serviced the mines. Many of these people built the beautiful grand mansions and Victorian homes still evidenced in the neighborhood. Jimmy Burns, owner of the Portland Mine, lived at 1315 Wood Avenue. He later built the Burns Theater, purported to have the best acoustics west of the, of the Mississippi. Many people, many people back from back east were attracted to Colorado Springs as a beautiful, healthful place to live. Many homeowners of the North End, such as Philip Stewart, whose home was at 1228 Wood, served at all levels of state and local government. Alice Bemis Taylor, who lived just north at 1238 North Wood, uh, Wood Avenue, and was known for her philanthropy, contributed money for construction of the Colorado Springs Day Nursery and the Fine Arts Center. She also endowed the Taylor Choir at Grace St. Stephen's Episcopal Church and made numerous contributions to Colorado College. Mining wealth supported many philanthropic causes in Colorado Springs. In addition to various charities, the Tut family, who lived on Cascade Avenue and Uinta Street, were notable contributors to Colorado College. This inclu included their home which is now the Colorado College Alumni House. A tuberculosis, a tuberculosis sanatorium, Glockner Hospital was built in 1890 in the northern part of the Old North End. Glockner Hospital doctors and professors at Colorado College, which was located just south of the Old North End, often bought homes and lived in the neighborhood. Late in the 20th century and into the 21st century, the neighborhood gradually reflected a more diverse population. In the 20th century, and as time passed and lifestyles changed, the housing styles and housing sizes in the Old North End changed as well. Mixed in with the Victorians, one finds bungalows, Spanish and Mediterranean styles, and mid-century modern homes, which gives the neighborhood a more eclectic appearance. And now we come to the association. How did it start and when? In 1955, although Jean Shemansky and Ruth Shaw rallied neighbors to oppose a proposed 12-story hospital building to replace Glockner Hospital, they lost the, flight, the fight to block the zoning variances required to construct this hospital tower. An account recorded in the Levy book quotes, Jean Szymanski. When we got to City Hall, we found such a mass of people that the meeting had to be immediately moved to the little theater in the city auditorium. The proponents of the plan included, I think, every doctor who wasn't busy in his office, a very large number of the hospital staff. The Onan Board instituted a tree planting program supported the North End Woodlands Initiative to replant dead trees on the neighborhood's historic medians, worked to create the North End National Register Historic District in 1982 and its update and expansion as the Old North End National Register Historic District in 2015, wrote a neighborhood master plan that was adopted by City Council in 1991, constructed a gazebo and park to the south of the Steel School playground, and initiated a sidewalk improvement program. Using the neighborhood master plan as a guide and often working with state and city government, 
Onan Historic Preservation Committee, under the auspices of the Onan Board, has worked through the public process to bring the North End Historic District under the city's overlay zoning or ordinance by means of an improvement district, which requires 75% vote of neighbors on this street, installed historic looking street lights on North Tay Home. Although the initiative passed to include Wood Avenue and San Miguel Street, the city lost its funding at that time. Since Tejon Street did not require the installation of new infrastructure, engineering could install historic looking street lights on Tejon. Using the neighborhood master plan as a guide and often working with state and city government, Onan Historic Preservation Committee, under the auspices of the board, has, as I've said, done many things. The Onan Board's Events Committee organizes and puts on special events throughout the year. The Easter Egg Hunt at the Gazebo, June Yard Sale, sale Summer Garden Party, Onan Fest, Block Party in October, and Cookies and Cocktails in December. Oh, and one last one that I forgot about is Santa's visit at the Steel School Gazebo for the children. The Old North End neighborhood is an historic gem in our state and in our city. And its board and committees are best characterized by their caring, long-term hard work, collaboration, advocacy, and trend setting. So it was, it's with a great deal of pleasure that we award a Second Lifetime Achievement Award to the Old North End Neighborhood Board. I'm Roxanne Eflin, the Vice President of the Board of the Historic Preservation Alliance, and I am so pleased to present our brand new award this year, the Preservation in Progress Award. This award is being presented to the entire community of Colorado Springs for your collective efforts to develop and adopt Historic COS, our city's new Historic Preservation Master Plan. The Historic Preservation Alliance was one of the sponsors of this three-year event, which I was pleased to work on with a four-member consulting team, plus the planning department, and more than 200 people through many meetings. The goal was to create a solid, informative, and aspirational plan to continue weaving historic preservation policies and benefits into the future of our community. Historic COS is found online and linked to our website at hpasprings.org, and it comes complete with an action matrix laying out the tasks, the deadlines, and the responsibilities to move it along and to do what the plan was meant to do. We especially thank the City's Historic Preservation Board, the Planning Commission, the Historic COS Steering Committee, Mayor Southers, City Council, and so many passionate citizens just like you. Every step of the evolution of this plan was met with unanimous approval, including its final adoption by City Council last December, just barely 90 days before COVID-19 completely altered our lives. The reason that this is an inaugural Preservation in Progress Award is because our work is not done. It is never done. Preserving, protecting, and promoting the authentic historic places that matter to all of us takes persistence, patience, and best practices. It also takes courage to speak out for places that cannot speak for themselves. Thank you, Catherine. Yet take a moment to look around. We're here at the Historic Pioneers Museum. History is everywhere, like a three-dimensional free-for-the-taking experience. Beautiful older buildings and neighborhood streetscapes teach us about art and architecture, good design, craftsmanship of the building trades, engineering, building materials, landscaping, the economy, and our society as a whole. No one has ever regretted saving a historic building from the landfill. And remember this, the greenest building is the one that already exists. Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world, and indeed it is the only thing that ever has. This award is for you, Colorado Springs, with our sincere hope that you will encourage our city officials to pick up the pace and get moving on those action steps that are laid out in the plan. 
In order for our great 150-year-old Olympic city to truly be great, we must honor its past, maintain and preserve its distinctive significant places that clearly and uniquely define our character. And we need to recognize the economic power of historic preservation. Be well, be engaged, and stay hopeful. And thank you from all of us on the board of directors of the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs. Thank you.